Morgan Freeman is one of my most favorite people to listen to. He's a, a black man that I'm very, very proud of. Um, I like a lot of things about his character. Um, one thing I don't like, and I think he is part of the sabotage of Christianity when he says it, is that he did his uh, journey to tell the story of God. And what he came up with by studying all these different religions and singing some kind of conflict and seeing some kind of cry for God, um, I thought he was an atheist, but he doesn't call himself that. He calls himself agnostic. And um, he believes in this new, uh, he created a religion, he said. I can't pronounce that word. It starts with a Z. I can't pronounce it. But he made a word for it, a title for it. He said it's all about, this is his mission statement, me, good thoughts, good deeds. Me, good thoughts, good deeds. And where I come from, if it's about you and your good thoughts and your good deeds, you don't need God. Anybody that walks into a church in my circles goes into those churches because he understands that he is not worthy. Okay, he understands that he is not worthy or really capable of making it about him, his deeds, his thoughts. How do we even know Okay, that's somebody different. I was going to say, man, I'm getting tired of the guy going over to mess with that door. Um, how do we know what's good? Okay. Do you always have to put your hand in the fire to know that it's not good to touch the fire? Do you always have to get STDs to know that it's not good to practice sexual promiscuity? Do you always have to get teeth knocked out of your mouth to realize you shouldn't go around picking fights with people? How do you know what's good? Because our God, and He is real, teaches us what is good. Through his Bible. And even though the Bible is another so called religious book, just another religious book, when most people that read the Bible attack the Bible more than any other religious book, you know, uh, namely atheists and, and, and maybe people like Morgan Freeman, okay? will attack the Bible because they know that it is more profound and more, uh, what's the word, um, devout, prudent, and wise, and deep than any other book that's ever been written. And it is God's book. It's not man's book. Man just recorded it. It's God's book. No other religion in the world has their God's book. They have their religion's book. But it's not God's book or their God's book, okay? My, the Bible is God's book, written for the family of God. Now, when you say stuff like, 
religious studies. That's an oxymoron to me. Because um, it's not a study. Your relationship your, with your wife, is that a study? Okay? Even your relationship with your dog ain't a study. It's a relationship. Right? Um, and you can't go and... Well, you can. I can go out there. I know I can. And I've done it. I I personally believe that I've studied that there's a lot more going on with the dog. That science isn't being on, honest about. There's a lot more going on with these dogs and cats. You know, living in your house, scratching fleas off themselves. Okay. And, you know, um, you know, them coming out from outdoors after they didn't had their lips and their nose everywhere and then sniffing and, and licking on you. Okay. I believe there's a lot more going on there than what science is willing to tell us. Okay? What your doctor is willing to tell us. Okay? I mean, I'm sorry. You know, if 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 my my toddler bites me in the face, that ain't the same thing as my dog licking me. Okay? It is proven. Um, what's going on with, uh, babies? Because we have more to prove. We have, it's all right there to prove it. But, you know, it's not the same thing. I've seen people argue it. It's not the same thing when your puppy licks your face. It's not the same thing. Okay? Um... But, you know, we study a science that believes that, or at least supports, it, they, I don't even believe they believe it, but they support it, the idea that you can be a woman just by getting surgery, or you can be a man by getting surgery instead of being biologically a man or a woman, okay? Okay? Um, that's how I feel about that. Um, but when we say religious studies, we're watering down what any religion, I'm, I'm not just speaking for me, but I'm speaking for any religion out there. If I say religious studies, how do you study You know, how, how, how do you, how do you study something that you already got or something that you're looking forward to? Well, I'm on my way to China. While I'm on a plane, I'm going to study China. You know, now you're supposed to know something about Chinese people and until you went to China, you really don't know. You can sit back here and judge just like I got Chinese neighbors. Um, well, I had Chinese neighbors before I moved out here. Um, these Asians up here are more uh, are from another colony, but um, the, when I lived in Westmoreland County, I had a lot of you know a lot of Chinese restaurants throughout the county, and um, until you and well, my friends told me that there's a difference between. Chinese people living here in the States and Chinese people actually living in China. And until you go to China, even though there's Chinese people living here in the States, lots of Chinese people, more Chinese people than any other, in my opinion, from what I've seen, more Chinese than any other Asian race, okay? Um, and until you go to China, you can study all you want. 
unless you go to China and get to know the Chinese people and their culture. You really don't know. You really don't know. And it's the same way with the church. You really don't know. Until you've been born again and filled with the Spirit of God, like receiving a vaccine, like, 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 you know what I'm saying, getting a snot beat out of you, and now you know who not to mess with no more. You know, like dodging bullets, and now you know where not to go anymore. Okay? Until you come to that brick wall, I always say, you really don't know. You're really not getting it. All the atheists that have turned from atheism to Christianity, so to speak, they all were very educated as to why it be kind of retarded to believe in God, to serve God, to become a Christian. Okay? But you know what? Like I said in other videos, one day they just... They just opt out of atheism like it was nothing, and they went and did it. Okay? Just got up one day and did it. And it was harder to explain why they opt out of atheism than it was to explain why they were atheists. They could explain why they were atheists. They couldn't explain why they just overnight said, I quit. Walked out and said, I'm walking with Jesus. Serving God, and I speak for any religion, because all religions um, are about family what are supposed to be it's supposed to be about you and your colony you and your flock you and the people that serve the same god around you so that's a relationship it's supposed to be anyway only i found that christians really 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 treat the highest number of so-called religious people and i said so-called religious people because i don't consider myself religious but the highest group the highest number of so-called religious people that have um, have the most intimate experience being religious or being uh, intimate with God, so to speak, are the Christians. You know, I was watching Abun preach uh, yesterday or the day before. New video popped up where this Muslim woman was a Muslim who could take her hijab off anywhere, anytime she wanted to and also practice porn. And the video was supposed to, you know, um, you know, really, really concentrate and find hilarious that this woman was a Muslim while she was a porn star, but it went another direction where she's not really a Muslim at all. And that's what Abin Preach said. Oh, she don't know what it means to be a Muslim. Because the Muslims, you know, even though Muslims got a lot of issues as far as, you know, um, as far as the way they treat women in general. You figure, why wouldn't she be able to do porn in the, Uni if the, in the United States? Because she go back home, you know, she's a second class citizen anyway. And they're going to treat her like trash while they try to put a ring on her finger. Okay? Um, and force her, force her into marriage in, in some cultures of, of Islamic faith. Um... But they were more concerned about her life. This woman's going to get killed. 
Because you can't be a Muslim and be a porn star. Okay? You're going to get killed right with the homosexuals. You're going you're gonna to be right at the firing range or, 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 you know, get your head chopped off or whatever like an infidel if you get caught doing prostitution by your own bloodline people. Okay? So all Muslims, and this is, you know, I saw a woman just last night, and I was telling one of the officers about it. Like, he couldn't believe it. Like, what? She's just taking her her job on and off in public? That's not a real Muslim. Oh, she's going to come into the hotel. There's men in there, and they ain't Muslim. She's going to take her her job off in front of everybody. Okay? And then she's on the phone with somebody. And then she's going to go outside, and as she's going outside, she's going to put it back on. What is she afraid of outside? They ain't, you know, they ain't 90% Muslim either, you know. Um, but, this woman did this, and like one of the other officers said, what? Muslims don't usually do that. I says, I know, that's kind of non-Muslim. When you wear the hijab, you wear that all day, period. Rain, rain, snow, heat, scorching heat, cold, whatever, wind blowing, whatever. You wear that hijab that is part of your head covering, and it's even in the Bible. Not in the Bible for modern day Christians, but Christians of the past even um, we wouldn't call it the hijab, but they wore the same type of thing, a head covering, um, as part of their, um, respect for angels, believe it or not, respect for angels and respect for their, uh, virginity and their, um, worship to God. They wore the headscarf, okay, to cover their heads had to be covered. Now, the Bible also says that if a woman has hair on her head, back then, back then, back then, don't get it twitted, back then, um, her head was covered because she had a lot of hair. Because, what, men don't have a lot of hair. They, have, they can grow a lot of hair, but they don't, that's not, you know, it goes back to the scripture that said don't wear a woman's garment. You, a man shouldn't have his hair as long as a woman's. That's just part of the culture. Okay, but today we got the woman with short hair walking down the street, okay, um, with her boyfriend. She got short hair. Her boyfriend got hair all the way down his back. The only reason why you can tell them apart is because one is hairy with, with flab all over the place, and the other one is nice and tight and, you know, graceful looking from behind. So, oh. Okay, the short, the the one, the shorter one on the left, with the short hair, that's the woman. Okay, I'm getting off, but the thing is, every religion is, you know, supposed to be devoted to their God in a very relationship kind of way. So when we, when we do what Morgan Freeman did try to take this journey and call it religious studies, religious sciences, you know, it's an oxymoron because, like I said, until you get there and join the experience, you really don't know. And, you know, any religion, not just, not just mine, so to speak, it's not a religion, but not even mine, I'll put it like that is about, you know, business or a thing, okay, that we have. No, it's about sacrifice. Muslims sacrifice by wearing a hijab and, and different things that they could do that other Americans could do, okay? Um, they sacrifice that to call themselves Muslims. Not only that, but their prayers or holidays that might be very boring to them as it is boring to you, okay? They still make those sacrifices. 
all the holidays and rituals and all that kind of stuff, okay, to call themselves devout Muslims, dedicated to their faith, okay? Christians, the biggest thing that they do is abstain from things that everybody, everybody should be abstaining from. Like everybody should be keeping their body under subjection. Everybody should know what a woman is, what a man is. This is where we're at today. We no longer know what a man or a woman is. And many people, including women, including biological women, were asked this year alone, what is a woman? And they said, I don't know. I cannot say. Okay? And so, now that's going to be titled under religious studies. To say that a woman is this, or a woman is that, or a man is this, or a man is that. Now, I guess they're just going to call that another term of religious studies now. Because only the religious people would think that they have the right to define what a woman is or a man is. Okay? It's really, 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 really bad. It's really bad. It's really sad as it is bad. Um, but it's not just a thing. Um, you know, being a Christian... Being a male Christian or being a female Christian is like a fork, okay? Like a spoon, okay? A spoon, or rather say a fork, has more in common with chopsticks than it does a spoon. A fork has more in common with chopsticks than it does a spoon, okay? Because... You can't, you can't eat soup with chopsticks, okay? Neither can you eat soup with a fork, okay? But if you put a spoon in into it, you're dealing with a whole new different instrument that can do a totally different set of things, okay? But a fork is not, you know, I use forks for fixing things in my house. That's not what they're for. And I make sure that those forks go in a toolkit when I'm done with them. So that, you know, I don't end up, you know, eating oil or something. You know, even if I wash it, you know, you don't really want all them chemicals and stuff in your dish soap and all like that. It might not really come completely off. So, you know, um, I make sure when I use a fork for things that it's not for, it gets locked in my toolkit. Okay. Um... But a fork is not used as a screwdriver, even though we've done it. A fork is not used to, you know, um, scrape stuff, but we've done it. But we have better tools. Hello. We have better tools than a fork to do stuff like scrape stuff and, and pick at stuff and put a hole in stuff, pierce something. And get something, you know, um, create an opening. We have precise tools that can create the exact opening we want. Whether we want that opening to be a circle or we want that opening to be just a, a slit. We have the proper tools, especially even today. Okay, M more so. Um, but even back in the day, they had toolsmiths. So that you don't, you know, eat with the same thing you're digging in the dirt with or the same thing you're putting a hole in the wall with. Okay. They had tools back then. A lot of these millennials don't realize that. Um, they, think, they think life began when they were born. Um, no, life began when God created Adam and Eve, sorry to tell you. I hate to bust your bubble, but that's when it began. And that's when people began to have culture and practice medicine and learn how to uh, make boats and survive 
the flood and you name it. That's when animals were given their names and and men and women were um, it was this it was already found out then, you know, about gender and all like that. God already took a rib out of Adam to make Eve. Why didn't he just make Adam transgender then? Being, being he already had the female rib or the female bone inside him to make a woman, why didn't he just make all these atoms, you know, to sleep with each other? Being they had the, the male rib and the female rib, okay, and whatever goes with that within them. Now, I know a lot of my scientific um, hotshot atheists that love to come to my channel will make this all about a thing. You understand my point. God already took something out of Adam. Call it what you want to. Call it poop. I don't care. He took something out of Adam to make the woman. That blows your whole transgender thing out of the water. Or knocks it into the water, I should say. God already did it. But God already decided in the beginning what gender is all about. He told the man in the beginning, before the woman was even created, he told the man what her job was. And the cultures many, 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 many moons before us enjoyed the women enjoy being women even though they were very submissive to their husbands they 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 walked around their house like maids not that the man felt that they have to do that not not that the man made that a mission statement that a woman should walk around her house like a maid but women did it because they didn't really have jobs back then. They didn't really have other things to do besides serve their husbands. And a lot of them enjoyed that. Okay? But them women back then were more quicker to grab a sword and go to war faster than they were to go and, and, and go get an office job. Right? You know, so um, life was different back then. But women weren't weak. Women weren't weak. Women weren't transgender. Women weren't feminists, and they didn't hate men. Okay? They understood that a man was for them, and they were for the man. They were two separate, two separate genders and two separate instruments that come together and complement one another. Okay? And, and, and the culture, the church, the children... Okay, the livelihood and everything was built off of this. Okay? So, you know, I'm learning all this without religious studies. Right? And I never had to go to school, you know, and learn religious studies to, to know this. Okay? Now, Morgan Freeman... Um, he's all into that religious studies thing. He took this journey around the world. And I believe what he might not be saying is that he's more lost about religion. Okay, and I watch, you know, I watch that documentary. Um, I watched it. Matter of fact, you can look it up here on YouTube. Um, Morgan Freeman, The Story of God. And he takes you through. It's like a two hour long uh uh, documentary, I believe. Quote me if I'm wrong. And he takes you through all the religions of the world to come, to come and what? Create his own? You couldn't find a good religion, Morgan Freeman? You couldn't find, you couldn't find the proper place to put your faith out of how many religions? Here we go back to the title of my channel. There's only one. One God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one people, okay? Um, one culture, 
One. 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 There's only one. Yes, I'd be confused too, Mr. Morgan Freeman, if I went out there to study all them religions. Okay, and then I come back here and I want to hate on the one that's the most simplest. That has always fooled me, even when I was youngster. You know, I mean, we walked through um, Pittsburgh, you know, the section, the inner city section ghetto of Pittsburgh that I lived in back when I was a kid. We walked down there and the Muslims was always down there trying to give us some moon pies and all that kind of stuff and tell us, to give us these little um, English written little tracks about Allah and all this kind of stuff. And, you know, as a child, I was like, why are they all African? And why do they disagree with the guys that are Arab? If they're all Muslim, shouldn't they be hanging out together? You know what I'm saying? Why they got Why we got ghetto Muslims? Why do we have ghetto Muslims and then we got we got Muslims, you know, down downtown, and then we got Muslims, you know, in Philadelphia, in in downtown Philadelphia, that is. But up here in the hood, we got we got we got the hood Muslims. I mean, you know what I'm saying? If it's if this was the real thing. If this is if this is really grandma's potato salad, okay, then you know, shouldn't we all be able to get together and feast together? So even as a child, without knowing anything about Muslims, I was already turned off by that attitude because see, like I told you in the last video, me and my friend Keith were just talking about this the other night. We would get together and we'd go to what's called a general assembly. General Assembly, man, there were so many people there that were Christians from all over the world. And we'd go there, and they and, and the music was just all mixed with every race known to man. They put it all together for the thing, and we'd go in there, and it was raining Asian women in there, too, let me tell you. Raining gorgeous Asian women, raining women from third world countries, men and women, um, reigning, you know, Russians and Germans and Ukrainians. Oh, yeah, the Ukrainians was in there worshiping with the Russians at the General Assembly. They spoke so many different languages. You had to have interpreters and they had people doing sign language in every area of, of Christian culture was able to come in and be what? One! We're just talking about this the other day. One. The whites and the blacks, they were the top, they were the top leaders of this thing. They were the ones that really put this all together. The black church and the white church put this all together. I can't say, now my church was there, okay, but they didn't really they didn't really kick it with white folks like that you know what i mean cuz they weren't a power church you know what i'm saying but in order to have power you got to you got to put aside your racial issues and come together and 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 put your cultures together and that's what they did um and i mean you know i mean you couldn't just go in there and not think that you was going to invest something either. We invested a lot of money into these general assemblies. I mean, you know what I'm saying? There was, a, And we had to do the book sales and, and all the stuff. A lot of people would come in here and call this the biggest mega, you know, crack up, the biggest mega heist you ever want to meet. They called the general assemblies, just like they called promise keepers back in 95. They called it the big mega heist where Christians were going out there and selling and doing all this stuff. Let me tell you something. We're a family. We can make money off of grandma's potato salad just like anybody else. Grandmama got a right to sell books. And we can all make money off of grandmama's books. Okay? 
even if even Kenneth Copeland and Clefo Dollar, if they think they're part of the family, God bless them. Okay, I I I wish them the best. I wish their airports and their 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 you know big country clubs or whatever that they do morally morally in the name of Jesus. If it makes them rich, God bless them. There ain't nothing wrong with that in a country like this. We have just as much right to be rich as anybody else. And like I said in the last video, you can never, especially a godly man, you can never make too much money. You can never have too many airports, too many, too many large homes, million dollar homes. You can never ever have too much, you know, you can never have too many guns. If you're a godly man, one day we're going to need your military system. Things are getting so bad. Okay, all these all these gay dudes and speedos shooting at us, okay? We're going to need backup, okay? <laughs> all, these, all these ladies with penises sticking out of their dresses. We're going to need backup, okay? You know, we're going to need backup. <laughs> but anyway um seriously it's not a study it's a study about as far as studying the true word of God you don't study around the Bible you study in it you don't study around the Bible you study in it Morgan Freeman Morgan Freeman did this real Christians do this Okay, there's a big, fat difference. Big, fat difference. Okay? And I see a lot of people doing that. Oh, I'm going to school for religious studies. And then you go to school for religious studies and come out a fornicator. Come out transgender. How's that work? You did these religious studies to come out of there gay. Wait a minute. Which, relig what, what, which one of these religions told you that it was okay to be gay. It sure wasn't the Christians. It wasn't the Muslims. God help us. It wasn't the Mormons or the Jehovah's Witnesses. Buddhism, I don't know. Okay? Um, Christian scientists, I don't expect most of them to be gay. Okay? You know, wh who taught you during religious studies that it was okay to be gay? Who taught you during religious studies to decide that you were one thing at birth, but now you come out of the closet to be something else, while you by why you still are biologically something else. There's no religion that studies this. There's no there's no religion for transgenders or 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 gayism. No, you took your secularism and you thought that if you went to school and studied religious studies, religious sciences, different names, different schools, different places, okay? You thought that that would cover you as far as religion goes. And therefore, you could do whatever you want to do. And when somebody wants to say, hey, you know, I don't know if God agrees with you being gay or God agrees with you being this or that. You could say, well, I went to school for religious studies. Again, there's a difference, okay, than going around the Bible and around the culture, okay, and really, really, really joining the experience, okay? Um, and I'm going to close there. Um, it's not a thing. It's not a hobby. We're not just selling scooters here. We're not playing bingo. This is not a hobby. Okay? In the Christian community, Jesus is one. And Jesus is the greatest thing that ever happened to us. Okay? Not because we just have to have it that way. 
Okay, not because we're atheists about every religion except our own, which which we should be, which 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 we should be, wouldn't you? We should be atheists about every religion except our own. However, I have tried to find my place in these other religions. And the gift of God compels me to walk up rightly before the one true God. Okay? And the one experience. And the one, one culture that supports that experience, that supports the same Bible. Okay? And we find out that we don't need religion, we need God. We don't need religion as much as we need God. Let me say it one more time. We don't need religion as much as we need God. God bless you. I am D. Roy Cruz. I am your life applications officer. I think I've got it all out and I'm out of time. So thank you for watching and we'll do this again in a little bit. See you then.